In this video, we're going to be continuing our discussion as to how we derive the variance of maximum likelihood estimators in the circumstance when we're talking about a normal error in the population. And in the last video, we spoke about how we wanted to calculate something which was called the information matrix, which we defined in terms of a parameter mu and a parameter sigma squared. Um, but in fact, we actually discussed how we don't normally know mu and sigma squared. So what we actually do is we estimate the information matrix using our estimators for mu and sigma squared, which we write here as mu hat and sigma squared hat. And we spoke about how this matrix has four different components. The first of the components which we're going to drive is actually going to be the off diagonal element of the information matrix or the estimator for the information matrix. And in order to derive these terms, what we do is we take the second differential of our likelihood. If we take, for example, this term up here, and then we derive, or differentiate rather, this term with respect to sigma squared, then what we get is we're going to get a minus 1 over sigma squared all squared, because I'm differentiating with respect to sigma squared, times the sum from i equals 1 to n of x i minus mu. And if we actually think about this term up here in terms of substituting in our estimators for sigma squared hat and for mu hat, then it becomes quite apparent quite quickly that this term is actually going to be zero. And the reason that this term is zero is because in terms of deriving our maximum likelihood estimators for mu, which we call mu hat, the first order condition was to set this differential up here equal to zero. And if this differential up here is equal to zero when mu equals mu hat, then in that circumstance, that means that this stuff inside the parenthesis here must itself be zero, which means that this stuff inside the parenthesis here must also be zero. So the off diagonal elements of our information matrix are immediately seen to be zero. And note that we could have got there also similarly by differentiating this expression with respect to mu and we would have got exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter the order in which you differentiate our likelihood. Okay, so that's the off diagonal elements. How about the diagonal elements? So the first element I said was d2l over d mu squared. So that's just differentiating this expression up here again with respect to mu. And if we do that, all we're going to get is we're going to get a minus n over sigma squared because when I differentiate this bracket up here, forgetting about the, the hat for now, then this mu just contributes a 1, so we're just going to have a minus 1, and then we're going to be summing over that n times. So that's why we get a minus n on the top there. And if we then substitute in our estimator for sigma squared, we're going to get n minus n over sigma hat all squared. Okay, so that's the first diagonal element. How about the second diagonal element? That is d2l over d sigma squared all squared. So I'm just differentiating with respect to sigma squared again, and I'm differentiating this expression up here. Well, this one's a little bit more complicated, but not much more. If we take each of these bits in turn, if we differentiate this expression here with respect to sigma squared, then we just get an n over 2 times sigma squared all squared, which is just sigma to the power 4. And then if I differentiate this term up here with respect to sigma squared, then essentially this is just like differentiating x to the power minus 2, where x is sigma squared. So all we're going to get from the second term is going to be minus 2 times, well, we're going to have, still on the bottom, we're going to have 2, but then our power is going to now be sigma to the power 6, times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu all squared. And then we can actually go ahead and simplify this a bit if we actually substitute in for sigma hat squared and for mu hat. If we do that, we then can sort of see that this term here is actually just going to be n times the estimator for the population variance. So this term here is just n times sigma hat squared. And to see that, just go back to the last few videos and you'll be able to see that sigma hat squared is actually the population variance. So it's not hard to see why that would be the case. Okay, so if we use that, then we're going to have that this is equal to n over 2 times sigma hat to the power 4. 
And then what we're going to have here on the sort of this right hand expression, we're going to have minus 2 times, now we're going to have n sigma hat squared on the top, divided through by 2 sigma hat squared um, to the power 3, which is sigma hat to the power 6. And now we can do a bit of cancelling because the sigma squared or sigma hat squared cancels with some of the sigma hat squared on the bottom here. So we're just left with sigma hat to the power 4 on the bottom. And then we've got n minus 2n, which is just going to leave us with minus n over 2 sigma squared or squared. So sigma to the power 4 or sigma hat to the power 4, I should say. So now we've got all of our uh, all of our components for our estimator for the information matrix. In the next video, I'm going to group them together, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and show uh, or derive what the Kramer-Rau lower bound is for the case of a normal distribution when we're estimating our model via maximum likelihood.